back under deregulation, when the startups first started with the low cost models, they would get used airplanes from other sources, piecemeal it out, whatever they could buy, miss and match a fleet. That's not the, the way things work so much anymore. Uh, for instance, when Southwest first started, they wound up and they stuck with the 737 fleet across the board because parts are just there for everything. They don't have to worry about getting a DC-9 tire uh, or a 747 engine or anything else like that. So there's an economy to having one type of airplane and an economy to having newer aircraft. So the startups now, there aren't the used airplanes like there used to be. A lot of them out in the desert, they've been retired because they've reached a certain age where it's more expensive to operate them. And not the least of which is the older aircraft consume more gas, they're not as efficient. And anybody that's been to the gas pump to fill their car understands that fuel prices are also reflected in aviation. So what we have now are startups or so-called low-cost carriers, Spirit, Allegiant, Frontier, and they're all flying new equipment for the most part. Uh, they're all getting Airbuses. They come with some warranty for service, which also cuts their maintenance cost. There's a, a uniformity of spare parts. And even in an, uh, an airport where they don't have maintenance, very often airlines will cooperate. And one airline might have a tire that they can be uh, lending to another airline, and they'll just get one back somewhere down the line because the next day it might be their airplane that sucked and need a part as well. Inventory is incredibly expensive to keep for uh, aircraft, especially in outbases, and especially for mixed fleets. So as we talked about with these new low-cost carriers, they're using one aircraft, generally one type, and uh, parts are easier to keep in place and they're newer. The actual life of an airplane doesn't mean whether it's safe or not safe. As anybody that's driven a car for 100,000 miles knows, if you've maintained it, it's gonna run just fine. You may have you know, issues, brakes wear out or tires, but that's normal wear and tear. Same thing with airplanes. As long as they're monitored and maintained, as long as the airframe itself is solid, as long as the airframe is still within the life expectancy or the uh, life cycle, then it's uh, as good to fly as the day as it came out of the, the production hangar. As far as oversight, the FAA does do checks. They do maintenance checks. The log books are incredibly important. And uh, that goes to getting a used airplane too. If I have to go back and I don't have proof about when the avionics were certified or the engines were overhauled, or all these checks were performed, that's an incredible cost for me to take on to get this airplane up to speed, up in the air, and generating revenue. When it comes to the operation of the airplane, the airplanes are getting much smarter. Uh, they transmit, if there's a maintenance issue with the plane, even before a pilot could see it, it may be transmitted to maintenance on the ground and it's not unusual for a pilot to pull up at the gate to be welcomed by mechanics with a part in a box already to replace on the airplane that they had no idea needed fixing. As long as the parts are replaced, as long as the maintenance oversight is right, and the training of the mechanics and the training of the pilots is adequate, then the operation is safe. The uh, Anything that you would buy a ticket for on Expedia or on the individual airline sites, uh, any American carrier, I would feel confident in doing my travel with uh, over the holiday period, sending your children back and forth to college or anything else. When you get on the airplane, the way the interior look may or may not reflect the actual aircraft age. Uh, years ago, there were DC-9s that had the whole interior redone. The engines were hushed to operate but the airplanes themselves were 35, 40 years old in some cases, but they were cheaper to operate and they were maintained to the point that they were reliable and still within the life cycle of the aircraft itself. There's very few things on an airplane that are the same years later after it comes out of the factory. Of course, the tires, the brakes, the engines may have been changed out depending on what it is. There's definitely maintenance done on them, and any number of other things. Maybe the only original thing would be the yoke in the pilot's hand and the toilet seat in the bathroom. 
But everything else on those seat cushions, uh, overhead panels, anything and everything is subject to change. And periodically, an airline will do what they call a heavy check on an aircraft, where they take it to a hangar or some other maintenance facility, and they tear it up. And they tear the panels out of the bottom of the aircraft, and they watch uh, for hydraulic uh, juncture points. They look for cables that might be worn, um, electronic components, anything and everything, and especially looking for corrosion, depending on the environment that the airplane operates in. Salt air, cold weather, de-icing liquids over time, all these things could corrode rubber seals uh, and in some places metal. So these are very um, well monitored and under the heavy checks, the airplane comes out showroom new. When you board your airplane for the trip, you have the knowledge that there are people looking at the training of the pilots and the maintenance of the aircraft. The short answer to going ahead and operating uh, with an airplane that may or may not be, and I'm not going to use the word safe, maximal uh, performance. You don't want, if you're one of the upstart carriers or the low cost carriers that doesn't have a huge hub and spoke system, you don't want your airplane stuck in Man uh, Manchester or Topeka waiting for a part and a mechanic, and it could be out of service for three days. So you have an incentive financially, as long as the flat out responsibility for safety to keep the airplanes operating in a safe manner. An airplane that may cost a few hundred million dollars to buy new could be available for 20 or $30 million or possibly less. But the idea is like buying a used car. How much do you have to put into that car before it's safe for you to put your family on the road? And while you have your judgment when you get that used Ford Taurus, the FAA makes certain before the airplane is certified to fly that all the maintenance checks and all the systems are operating correctly. There are some shortages in the airline industry, mostly among the pilots, because there's a mandatory retirement age for pilots at age 65. Uh, and some of the pilots that were let go early when the pandemic began I'm sure the airlines that are missing that talent on the property right now as things spring back so quickly. The maintenance turnover is not nearly as much. The mechanics are experienced. They've been there a long time. Those that remember Eastern Airlines and then its consolidation with Continental, there were provisions uh, that required an airplane to be fixed. If one system, there's always redundancy in the airplane system. If one brake system's out or one uh, navigation piece is out, you would notate it and there might be limitations of where you could fly and how you could fly, uh, but you had a time period to get that fixed. Well, that's only happened since there was the uh, merger between uh, Eastern and Continental years ago. And there was no time limit. The provision was that the airline must do the work when it reaches the first uh, suitable maintenance facility with parts and trained mechanics. That has changed in the last several decades to where now there is a fixed time limit for any system that isn't operable to be repaired or replaced or the airplane is not allowed to fly at all.